let's explore how light temperature affects colors, specifically multi-chrome eyeshadows with the exception of one shade, which is a metallic shimmer shade, no shifts. I thought this would be interesting to take a look at, do a little study because I've been actually thinking about it for quite a while to do something like this. So I have chosen here a few different shades. I'm not going to be doing this video with like all multi-chromes, all the shades or anything like that. It's really just to give you an idea on what happens when you look at multi-chromes under different lighting. If you're at home, you're by the window. If you're in the kitchen, if you're in the bathroom, etc., you will see some slight different variations because of this. So first, let's actually talk about what light temperature is. So it is measured in Kelvin and it goes from 2000 to 10,000 Kelvin. Around 2000 is considered warm light and then going up it goes to soft white at 3000 Kelvin and then it starts to get a little bit more neutral if you will definitely a little bit more bluer as you go to 5000 which is the daylight temperature so around noontime if you were to step outside between 5000 and 6000 Kelvin it would be that color temperature technically per the Kelvin measurement and then going further up is 7,000, 8,000, which is much cooler. There's a lot more of a blue overtone versus the yellow and orange in the 2,000 Kelvin range. And then all the way to 10,000, it's really, really, really cool. So think of it as 2,000 K sunrise, 3,500 to 4,500 morning, noon, 5,500 to 6,500, and then afternoon, 3,500 to 4,500, and then sunset, which is 2,000 K. And also, Undercast lighting will be around the 6,000, 7,000. And so this also brings me to kind of when you see swatches, when you see anything colorful, any sort of makeup product on video, for example, you don't know if the white balance is set to auto or if it is actually balanced to what the lighting is in that environment and that does affect on how the color actually is perceived to the camera. So you want to make sure for sure if you are a content creator, an influencer, you make sure that you set your white balance in the camera otherwise it's going to be off. Now the variation levels are very it can range from very minor to very obvious. I've definitely seen a range of sometimes things look very, very yellow. Some things look a little bit too blue. I think most people have their camera set to auto. So it's really just allowing the camera to completely decide everything for you, which the newer cameras are definitely better at doing that, but it would be definitely best if you were manually controlling your camera to make sure you get the most accurate color portrayal. I see a lot of people saying, you know, they don't edit their videos, they don't edit their photos, etc. And so people think that that must mean that it's the most accurate. And I just have to say that you're really putting a lot of trust into your camera, your phone, to just accurately, right off the bat, portray something. I've seen photos that are heavily oversaturated that were taken with a phone. I've also seen photos that were extremely desaturated taken with a phone. So, and it, that doesn't mean that it's accurate. That just means it's just another way that it can look. I, also, generally speaking, you have a lot less control with your phone on just how much you can really dial in the settings to make sure you're, what you're looking at is what it actually is capturing. And I could honestly do a whole dedicated video on just phones versus cameras because because there's differences between Androids, iPhones, Pixel phones, between DSLRs, mirrorless, as well as even just the brands within those major brands like Canon and as well as Sony. But I digress. Let me get into why I chose these specific shades. So the first shade, which is an iridescent multi-chrome, which is notorious for always looking very white unless you are looking at it in lower lighting and or kind of at an angle is when you really get to start to see. So if I could just, I can really lower it down. And then it is so much easier to really see that slight like hint of color in there. The reason I picked this one is because I wanted an iridescent. This shade I think varies just the tiniest bit, especially depending on lighting because it's got like a blue purple indigo going on. The next two shades I picked were Winter Sun and Eris. And the reason I chose these is because they're a little bit more textured and also because they are very similar, but they do have a different tone to them, specifically straight on. They're just slightly different. So I really wanted to see what those would look like when they're next to each other and they're under different lighting. And I really wanted to make sure I had a purple in here. This is 
temperature rising from Shad by SD. And then this one is a multi-comb. This is Hyperion from Terra Moons. And this is essentially a neutral leaning multi-comb. And it is very interesting because I think that the tone that you see straight on can vary so, so much depending on the lighting. Sometimes it can look a little pinky. Sometimes it can look a little bit more taupey. And then of course it has that green, really beautiful green shift. And then I wanted a darker purple as well as a darker green. And this one does shift to a teal. So I thought it would be an interesting shade to throw in here. Rosette and trefoil. And then the last shade I chose was a Lucent Ray. And the reason I chose this one is because it has a very subtle tone to it and it is so subtle. I think on the lids it probably gets a little bit lost and it really is one of those shades that will really depend on if you can bring out that tone with a similar tone of matte shadow. It looks just ever so slightly almost plummy but it is so so minor that this is one of those great shades that you will really be able to see. The difference with a different light temperature because this actually reminds me and I was contemplating doing this with matte eyeshadow so let me know in the comments below if you would like to see that because we have the notorious Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette and that palette has some great neutral shades in there and that's the thing with, that I find in general with anything that is neutral I think it's super super easy to make it look warm to make it look more cooler tone depending on the lighting there was a lot of controversy when that one first came out because there were different pictures taken of it in different light temperatures and you could just see people were confused is this a warm tone palette or is this a neutral palette or is this a cool tone palette and it was like a whole thing so that's why I included that one because I feel like this is one of those shades that will really lean depending on the color and there is really no technically like this is wrong or not when your white balance is correctly set to the lights that you're using the camera interprets that as pure white so that should make it the most accurate so let's take a look at the swatches of these shadows with different lighting so what you're seeing right now is all of the lights and then the settings in the camera being set to 5600k and that is what I use when I'm filming. So this is kind of the control group essentially, and especially at a harsher angle with the light pretty close to the edge there of the curve where you will really see the shift. Just taking note on what all of these look like. I wanted to vary the colors and the opacity of the colors. Here is 6,500 on everything. I did have to turn off two of the panel lights because they did not go up to 6,500 Kelvin, but everything else is set to that. Next up, camera is set to 5,800. The main light lighting, the front of the shadows is set to actually 9,000. It's very white, cooler tone looking and on the side LED panels they're all super warm they're at 3200 and then this panel light is 3800. Here is my kitchen LED lighting and so essentially it is completely hitting it straight on and this is the floor <laughs> below everything and you can just see how much this top lighting really brings out the sparkle too but everything looks very warm which is you know that makes about sense and to match i turned my led panel that i'm holding to 2900 calvin so it is also warmer and i don't know why this is so hard so much harder to do when i'm looking up into the viewfinder but i feel like you can really see how much warmer everything is and my camera is set to 5000 here is bathroom lighting. Somehow I was able to get my hand in there. It's not really much room. But there's two LED lights that are warmer and then one that is cooler. Or, you know, it looks pretty cool. It doesn't look as neutral. And then my camera is set to 5000 and then I have an LED panel that is also set to 5000. And I definitely think that that really just adds a bit more of a cooler tone in it. LED lights are across from me and they're a little bit higher they're not in the ceiling but they're like up against the top of the wall and i think also that helps it bring out the sparkle now i think that's very interesting because the lights that we were looking at in the very beginning those are also led lights they're just panels 
but they kind of give the same diffused lighting so it really is interesting how different it is based on the orientation of the lights. Here is undercast window lighting and I set the LED panel to 6400 and the camera is set to 5800. Here they are in combination together. I did have to turn down the LED panel and I had to change a little bit of the settings as well on the camera because it is just so much darker. Here is direct sunlight and this is super, super bright. And then my LED light is set to 5,600 Kelvin. It is 4.30 p.m. Now the thing with sunlight is it does blow out multichrome, so it makes it for sure harder to see the shifts because it is just so bright, but in turn it does bring out sparkles if the shade has a texture that do reflect light a bit more. And then now the sun is gone, so you can kind of see how it slightly varies. I would love to hear your observations in the comments below, so please let me know what you might have noticed. I definitely think doing screenshots and then just swiping through them is when you will be really able to see any slight changes. And again, they will really vary from being like very drastic changes if the light is very, very yellow versus some slight minor ones where the colors of the lights are just a little bit mismatched, but it doesn't really affect too, too much, though it does a little bit. And that poses the question of, is that an accurate color swatch? of those shades but again it's something that you will experience in real life anyway as you're walking outside as you're walking inside if you're in an office if you're in the store like things are going to change on your lid predominantly they will stay the same a blue is not going to become an orange but you will definitely see some minor tonal differences and I think that for me is what makes multichromes so much fun so versatile I will also put down in the description box a couple of more videos if you really want to look further into light color temperature and how to really dial it in. And if you enjoyed the video and or you found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you next time.